This is 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. All right, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rahach All right, Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Holy Tongue. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the King and Savior of Israel. And Rahach Wadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for leading by example in these last days. And Shalom to the hopeful elect, all you Aki and making your bodies a living sacrifice. And through the Spirit, the name of this lesson is His Marvelous Light. And I just wanted to go into some precepts on how the Heavenly Father is shining His light upon us. And that light starts with Yahweh Shai Mashiach, all right, who died on the cross for the remission of sins for the 12 tribes of Israel, all right, you people of so-called Negro and Native Indian descent. And I want to go into this word. Actually, before we get started, I want to go into some different translations for 1 Peter 2 and 9. I found this interesting. This is, uh, this is the NASB version. But you are a chosen race. You are a chosen race. All right. That's what that word means when you go into generation. It's actually talking about a seed of people. Are right, you people of so-called Negro and native Indian descent? You 12 tribes of Israel. You're a chosen race, according to the Holy Scriptures. And this is in the New Testament. Apostle Peter is the head of the church. All right. The body of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So he's saying here, you are a chosen race. All right, this is the RSV version, but you are a chosen race. ESV version, but you are a chosen race. ASV version, but ye are an elect race. Okay, we're an elect race. The elect of the Heavenly Father is Jacob, man. The forefather of Israel, that's the elect. And in these last days, the elect is starting with the remnant, the believers. And this is another favor here, the YLT version. And ye are a choice race. All right, we're choice, man. We were chosen by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. The 12 tribes of Israel are a choice race, man. This really has very little to do with the lesson, but I just thought this was edifying. But I want to go into this word marvelous in First Peter. All right, here we go. Strong's G, 2298, Thamastas. Thamastas. Thomas Tas, all right, says, wonderful, marvelous, worthy of pious admiration, admirable, excellent, passing human comprehension, right? The light of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is beyond the thoughts of mere mortal men, all right? As he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. The light of Yahweh is passing human comprehension. But check this out it says, causing amazement joined with terror. All right, so when you go into scriptures and it says we've been called into this marvelous light out of darkness that causes amazement, join with terror, as it is written, through the terror of the Lord we persuade men. Okay, when you come into this light, you basically have to put off the works of darkness. Why? Because you know that there's a judgment. You know that there are consequences for sin. All right, the wages of sin is death. And in these last days, if you're not covered by the blood of the Lamb, you're going to be destroyed. You're going to be taken with this place, man. It says marvelous, extraordinary, striking, surprising. Right. The people are, are amazed at the strangeness of our salvation. Us standing boldly against Babylon the Great, against the international bankers, against the rulers of darkness in this world. That That's extraordinary. That's striking. That's surprising to people. But it's written. It's been written from the foundation of the earth that this would happen. And we're living prophecy right now. So let's get into prophecy. This is... The book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of Yahweh is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But Yahweh shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Right, the light of Yahweh by Hashem Shai is rising on his people right now, starting with the elect. The prophets, okay, people can see who the Israelites are, people can see what the true intent and will of the Heavenly Father is because the men of the Lord are out on the highways and hedges bringing out this word, man. And we were all called into this marvelous light by the foolishness of preaching. Whether you came across the prophets in person or you saw them on the internet, at some point you were like, this is the truth. Why? That light is coming upon us, man. That 
we we were in a state of darkness it says for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people and that's that's plain to see man we're in a time when the earth is completely covered in darkness we actually live in an age where you have millions of people that doubt the existence of a creator they think they just came about from some random explosion and that created dna that created a sunset that created a perfect perfectly ordered cosmos with the sun moon and the stars that that keeps time perfectly better than any clock that just happened by by a, a freak explosion that's complete nonsense man but it's darkness it has to be that way why because the heavenly father is shining his light on the elect man and what is that light if you're spiritual you already know the question should be who is that light all right let's get it this is saint john chapter 12 verse 46 I'll start at verse 45. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Right, Yahweh Shai Mashiach is that light of the world, man. If you see him, you see the Father. There's no other way back to Yahweh but through Yahweh Shai. He's the mediator. And really, this doctrine is the only doctrine on earth that deals with the true intent of the Most High, the Heavenly Father, man. There's no... When you go into Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Pan-Africanism, atheism, uh, any sort of political ideology or philosophy, none of it deals with the destruction of Babylon and the simultaneous deliverance of the remnant of the nation of Israel. You're only going to get that from the prophets of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You can't even get the name Yahweh unless you receive it through a prophet. That's not something that you're going to see on television. It's not going to. You're not going to learn it in a seminary school. The name, will, and intent of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai can only be given to you by the servants of Yahweh Shai, and he's the light. So how are you going to come to the Father if you don't know the name, will, or purpose of, of the word, man? You can't. You're in darkness. That's why he said, I'm come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And that goes with the, the eighth chapter. Let's get uh, St. John 8, verse 12. Then spake Yahweh Shai again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Right? When you walk in Yahweh Shai, you're walking in the spirit. You're not walking in the flesh anymore. When you're outside of this truth, you're you're basically living to please your flesh. Whether you want to call yourself spiritual or not, whether you, you know, people people like to say, well, I'm spiritual. You know, they'll they'll meditate, they'll do yoga. They'll practice these different heathen philosophies like Hinduism and Buddhism. All, any ism except the truth of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Ultimately, you're serving your flesh because what these other philosophies do is create a sense in you that you're a good person, that you're a moral person, that you're a spiritual person, that you're enlightened. You're woke. Hashtag woke. Okay, I, I know what's going on, brother. I, I, you're woke, but yet if I ask you your nationality, you'll give me a color or a continent. You're woke, but you think the self-proclaimed white man is going to rule forever. You think he's going to give you reparations. You think he's going to say that he's sorry for what he's done to you the past 400 years and even beyond that in the Greek captivity. You don't even know about the Greek captivity. Jake is not woke, man. You're walking in darkness. Why? Because you don't have the light of the world. This is, since I said that, let me get this in Romans real quick. This is the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 11. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. So, if you if you don't know that salvation is near, if you don't know that Yahweh Shai is on his way back to completely eradicate America and deliver the elect, then you're walking in darkness, man. It says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. And who's that light? We just read it. It's Yahweh Shai. His armor is the scriptures, the faith, the shield of faith. Okay. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Right, that's walking in darkness. 
when you make provision for the flesh, you're basically like, look, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to be doing. This is what an Israelite man is supposed to do. I'm supposed to stand up to the heathen. I'm supposed to stand up to wicked niggas. I'm supposed to teach my people who they are. I'm supposed to teach my people the commandments. I'm supposed to keep the commandments to the best of my ability so I'm not a hypocrite. I'm supposed to walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. I'm supposed to be a light unto the world like how a shot was. That's, that's what you know you're supposed to do. But if you don't have the light, you're going to make provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. That's all that's in this world, man. Envy, lust, adultery, wantonness, undisciplinedness, cooning, idolatry. Once the Heavenly Father calls you into his marvelous light, which as we just read is amazing but also terrifying, you're supposed to walk as an example to those without. You're supposed to be a shining light in the midst of perverse darkness, man. Let's get that. This is the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 15. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of the Most High, which when you go into the word Israel, it's Yasharala in the Hebrew. He is a prince of God, or he is a prince with the power. All right. The sons of the Most High, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world among whom ye shine as lights in the world, right? That's the lot of the elect, okay? The remnant of Yahweh Bashim and Yahweh Shai are gonna walk and shine as lights in the world in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, man. We're not, the Heavenly Father, first of all, he could have woken up all Jake at the same time. He could have just snapped his fingers and everyone would have the truth, but that's not the way it was set up. That's not the way it's written, so that's not the way it's going to happen. The way it's going to happen is that the majority of Jake are going to be crooked and perverse and wicked, and the Heavenly Father is going to pick his jewels out of the dirt, man. He's going to shine his jewels. He actually tells you in Malachi, in the day where I make up my jewels, he's making up his jewelry right now. What do you do when you purify gold? You basically throw it in a furnace, man. You burn everything that you don't want. Everything that's not gold is going to get burnt, man. The scriptures tell you that our works are going to be tried. So we're in a time where the nation is crooked and perverse, but we're going to shine as lights in the world. And ultimately, the Heavenly Father could have kept us in that state, but he called us out. That's why it says we were called into his marvelous light. Why? Because we were in a state of darkness also, man. Matter of fact, let's, let's get back to prophecy. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 the people that walked in darkness the israelites have seen a great light yahweh and his men they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death which is talking about the daughter of babylon all right america upon them hath the light shined right upon them has the light shined and what is the light it's going to tell you in verse 6 for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of Yahweh of hosts will perform this. Now, this is heavy because it's telling you that Israel is going to be walking in darkness, but then a child is going to be born that's going to give us light, man. And that was Yahweh Shai Mashiach. It happened 2,000 years ago during our Roman captivity. And now this gospel, this word, is, is taking root and it's flourishing upon the earth. Why? Because the Israelites were scattered to the four corners of the earth. When you read Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and the 64th verse, it tells you Israel will be scattered among all the nations. So what? This gospel has to be preached unto all the nations. And then what? And then shall the end come. But it starts with what? That light. When you take a room full of darkness and you have a tiny bit of light, it doesn't matter how big the room is. It doesn't matter how dark the room is. That light is going to be... It's going to stand out in a room of darkness, just like the elect. We're going to stand out in a crooked and perverse generation. That's how it works, man. That's why when you come across the truth and the heavenly father opens your eyes, you, you see immediately, oh, this is what it is. You could be caught up in anything from Freemasonry to gang banging to just being a nigger, whatever, whatever you have going on. As you're walking in darkness and you come across the light. If you're of the elect, if you're one of those souls chosen from the foundation of the earth to receive this gospel, you're going to see that light. 
in the darkest of darknesses, you're going to see the light, which is Yahweh Shah Mashiach. In fact, let's get a. Uh, let's get St. Luke, the first chapter. The point is in 79, but I want to start at verse 68 because this is one of my favorite precepts. This goes into the biblical definition of salvation and it's found right here in the beginning of the gospel. So there is no, well, that was the Old Testament, brother. You got it. No, 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 no. This is the true biblical understanding of what salvation is. It includes the definition. It includes the prophecy. It includes the mercy, the light, okay, which we're going to get. It includes our enemies. Everything you need to know about what salvation actually is, according to the Bible, it's all right here. So let me start at uh, St. Luke 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, not of everyone, of Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people. How did he do that? Let's find out. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Why? Because the prophecy said that the Messiah would come from the seed of David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets which have been since the world began, right? Everyone from Moses to Samuel to King David himself, everyone prophesied of this moment of Yahweh Shah's coming. And what is his purpose? Let's read the very next verse, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, right? That's what salvation is. Salvation is not everyone coming together. The so-called white man, which is the Edomite, according to the scriptures, and the so-called black man, Hispanic man, and Native American man, which are the 12 tribes of Israel, according to the scriptures. We were never meant to come together. The scriptures don't say we'll be saved with our enemies. It says we'll be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised, promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Right. And what was promised to our fathers? That we would rule in an everlasting kingdom of righteousness, we would rule over the heathen. We would have dominion of the earth. We would have dominion over the natural resources and we would keep the commandments. The oath which he sware to our father Abraham that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest for thou shalt go before the face of Yahweh to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, who are his people, the Israelites, by the remission of their sins. Right, the Israelites need remission of our sins because sin is what separated us from our power. And Yahweh Shai, he's the propitiation for our sins, man. He's the atonement, the ultimate atonement. Verse 78. Through the tender mercy of our power, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us. And here's the point to give light, his marvelous light, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And that's ultimately the end game. And that's why Yahweh Shai, one of his titles is the Prince of Peace. He's going to bring peace between the nation of Israel and the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. All right, we're not going to sin anymore. When you read the new covenant, the laws are going to be placed in us. We're not going to ever sin ever again. In the kingdom of heaven, we're going to be completely perfect forever. There's not going to be a situation where we transgress the laws and start worshiping idols. And then we have to go into captivity again. This is the end of our captivity. Ultimately, we weren't appointed unto wrath. We're a vessel of honor. All right, matter of fact, let me, since I said that, let's, uh, Let's get 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I'm going to start at verse 4. But ye brethren are not in darkness, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Right, the Heavenly Father is going to send back his son as a thief in the night, man. But if you have the light already, you're not going to be in darkness, all right? As it's going to say, ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Why? Because the Heavenly Father shined his light upon us, like we read in Isaiah the 60th chapter and the 9th chapter. All right, Yahweh Shai, he, what did he tell his disciples? I've told you everything that the Father told me. So we're not walking in darkness anymore. That day is not going to take us like a thief in the night. We're, we're actually anticipating that day heavily. We're anticipating the mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip. We're anticipating the economy collapsing. We're anticipating these people getting put to death. We're anticipating these race wars. We're anticipating World War III. All of these other people are looking to 
reparations. They're looking at 2020 elections. They're looking to see this man's society continue. So they're going to be taken as a thief in the night. Why? Because they're the children of the night. They're walking in darkness. All right. But it says verse six. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober for they that sleep sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Right. And that word hope goes back to the Greek word el peace, which means expectation. All right. We expect that the elect is going to be delivered from these upcoming calamities. The wicked, they can expect destruction, man. It tells you in Proverbs 11 and 23, the desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. So if you have the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation, what does that mean? That means the heavenly father shine his light upon you. That's why when you go into the scriptures, it tells you this light is to comfort them that mourn in Zion. If you're not comforted by the gospel, what does that mean? That means you're in darkness. You want America to continue. You don't want Yahweh Shai to make his second coming. You don't want him to make his grand appearance with a host of angels and take over this wicked society and just wipe America off the face of the earth. You actually, you, you would rather stay here and get another Popeye's chicken sandwich than get the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because you're walking in darkness. But here's the point. Verse nine, for the most high have not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Right. We're not appointed unto wrath, man. Again, the desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath, man. You you people that are asleep, you can expect to be put to death, all right? When you, if you have something important to do in the morning and you don't set your alarm clock, you can expect to not wake up. You can expect that something horrible is going to happen the next day because you haven't prepared during the night. But when you walk in the light, you already know, okay, this is what I need to be doing. This is what I need to watch out for. You're not going to be caught by that alarm clock, man. And this is back in Isaiah chapter 42 verse 16 and i will bring the blind by a way that they knew not i will lead them in paths that they have not known i will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight these things will i do unto them and not forsake them right that's talking about the elect man the heavenly father he took our steps we were walking in darkness and he shined that light on us as it tells you in isaiah the 60th chapter and now we're walking in the light man it says, I will lead them in paths that they have not known. We were walking in total darkness. We didn't know, man, growing up, there was no possible way that you knew or could foresee that you'd be prophesying the second coming of Yahweh Shai and the end of America and Esau being a self-proclaimed white man. None of these things ran across your mind when you were in darkness. But the Heavenly Father, he shined his light on us. And we're walking in that light, man. And Abaratazah. I continue in the faith and all the Akim around me and all you Akim that believe that come across this video, man. Abaratiza, we all continue and endure into the end because this light is only going to get brighter, man. This light is only going to continue to magnify up until the point that we're delivered. All right. It's not going to go back to the way it was in the 90s. All right. Isn't it, the 90s aren't going to come back. That's over. All right. This world is going to become increasingly wicked sick twisted and perverse and the men of the lord are going to become increasingly repentant and so that great division is going to be visible it's going to be there's going to be a clear division between the men of yahweh bashim yahweh shai and the world right now you can see it clearly if you're spiritual but it's going to be to the point where even a random jake can look and say okay that's a man of the lord okay that's not a man of the lord. it's going to be obvious all right when isaiah 4 and 1 comes to pass these women are going to see the light on us man when the scriptures tell you thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, why are they going to be willing? They're going to see the power. The power is going to come with that light, man. This light, we're not just going to be reading the Bible forever, man. There's going to come a point where the Heavenly Father says, look, green light, go. That's when Jeremiah 16 and 16 is going to come into effect. That's when a lot of these prophecies that we're reading that we can feel, you know, you just sometimes you read a scripture and you're like, man, you you could just see it because you have the vision. Why do you have the vision? Because the Heavenly Father shined his light on you, man. If you're in the dark and all you've ever known is the dark, you, you can't visualize anything. You've never seen anything. It's like that movie Matrix. Uh, Neo asked Morpheus, why do my eyes hurt? And he said, because you've never used them before. We, we're really just exercising our spiritual eyes right now, man. There's going to come a point where the Heavenly Father is going to just magnify that light to the point where it, no one can deny it anymore, man. So keep the faith. 
keep enduring until the end. And uh, Abu Ratazad, this was edifying. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rahakwadash, double honest to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect, to everyone called into his marvelous light. Shalom.